right? This is going to be a continuation of our previous video. So if you haven't seen that, you're more than welcome to see it. But essentially all we have is a mapping of our grid. So here we're able to map our, our grid four by four, basically. And that's it. So now we have a selection as well in a dictionary. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to actually delete the, these, not the time map, sorry. Don't click delete on your keyboard, otherwise it'll actually delete the node. We want to delete it using in our tile set, delete this guy. Now what we'll do is we're going to actually put both of these. So let's put the outline, color outline, and then let's put the black outline. And now we have to adjust the tiles. As you can see, the tile set is not very good. This is not what we want. We don't want to put like that. We want to actually put one tile at a time, right? So for the tile size, let me just check my reference. Okay. So in terms of isometric, we want a 24 by 12 grid. And I'll explain why in a second. So let's adjust the grids in here to 24 by 12. And the margin, what we'll do is, let me just double check, four, four and four. The separation will do eight and eight. And I lied, the texture region will be doing by 24 by 24. So we want to select the entire thing. All right, and you're more than welcome to select all the tiles that you want to use, but I'm mainly just going to be focusing on like dirt and grass probably. So that's it. So four for the margin, four by four, separation eight by eight, and the texture region will be 24 by 24. And now when we select something, we can see that we can draw whatever things are not lining up perfectly. Now, let me check why that is to our outline. Check. I believe we got to reset this guy. 24, yeah, it is. Whoops. Oh, map sometimes glitchy. Okay, we gotta go inside. Ah, the first thing we gotta do is actually switch the tau shape to isometric. Otherwise, it, yeah, we'll see that the shape was not proper. So if we go back to square, we can see that it's 12 by 24. Now, when we do isometric, what happens here is that we do 12 here and then 24 pixels essentially here. So that's kind of what we want. We want the isometric tile to be upwards or essentially downwards like that, right? So now we have a proper isometric um, tile set. So let's actually change the ID from to one. And here we have that, we have that error. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just delete these. Then we're gonna go back to our outline. Let's go to the black outline or no, so the, the outline. Uh, yeah, we'll do one, two. That's fine. Actually, I'll do zero and one we'll go here, zero, one, one. And let's set up everything the same. So it, four, four, eight, and then 24 by 24. And now we have the same thing. So here we should be able to uh, draw it if we unselect the eraser. There we go. And now let's erase those. Okay. So now we have the black outline and color outline. So that way the black outline will be our selection. So let's actually play this and see what we get. Awesome. So we get a little squares here. Let's now add a camera or user camera that we added before. And now we can zoom in a little bit and we're able to see things. So let's actually zoom in and here we go. We now have our thing. So the selection is reversed. So let's actually go to our tile map and what we'll do is we'll reverse this. So we'll say set cell, um, I believe the source ID, yeah, that's the source ID. So we got to switch that. So let's say one, that's the layer. That's fine. This one is one. Uh, so let's play. And now we have the black outline perfectly. Now you will want to play with the layers. It kind of depends on what you want and how you want it to work. Um, this will work fine for what I want. So let's get started into the actual player. So let's go to our new scene and add a character body 2D. Let's give it a script. We'll say character body, we'll say player. And here, we're actually gonna just delete everything. We don't need this. So let's actually save this as player. There we go. Rename this guy as well, for player. And now we'll add a collision. And in here, we'll say shape, rectangle, 
Let's do, yeah, let's do rectangle. The collision, we're not going to worry about too much. It's just to avoid errors. And as the um, image, I'm just going to use a, a dough sprite. There are better resources out there that will allow you to use isometric characters. Um, I can link one in down below, but uh, I'll leave the setup to you for the animation trees and the animation player, all that stuff. I'll leave that to you. So we're going to focus on the movement itself. So <clears throat> in our player, let's go here and what we're going to do is we're going to actually use the speed. So I'm going to copy paste that back in. And now in our physics process, so we're going to add a physics process function and we're going to add two things. We're going to add a function called move mouse and move and slide. Now we want to add the move mouse function. So let's actually do that and say if function move mouse. And in that function, we're going to check for left click. Now this is going to error because we didn't add left click as a input. So we have to do that by going into input map. We'll say add and in here, We'll do mouse buttons, left mouse button, and we'll add that and close this. And now this shouldn't error. So if I say pass, hopefully the error will disappear. There we go. And now this is actually the easy part. I'll copy it and hopefully we can understand how this works. We're going to set the global position of our player. We're not going to use velocity. In fact, we don't even need move and slide for this, but we're going to add it for another function later. All we're going to do is we're going to take the vector of our selected tile and then subtract 0, point, uh, 0 and 6. Now, let's focus on this part first. <clears throat> so the selected tile, we haven't set yet. So let's actually do that. So um, here, we actually have a few errors. And I believe it's because in ordering, we want to enable Y sort. And then in, in here, we want to enable Y sort as well. And now the error should be gone. Now, in here, in our script, there's a few things we want to add. So let's actually add that. Now, the first thing we need is selected tile. Now, this will allow us to sh tell us what this selected tile is. And this is actually very easy because we're going to simply use a, t um, a function that is the opposite of local to map. It's just called map to local. Now, the reason we do this is because instead of, we could actually just say map to local, I think get mouse position, but we want the position of the tile that we're currently selected very specific to the actual tiles. So this will allow us to just update the selected tile position. Now let's actually go to our player and let's take this out. It's minus vector. So this will essentially set our global position equal to the selected tile block. So now let's play and I first have to add my character. Otherwise nothing will work. That's probably a good idea. Here we go. And now, Ooh, what's going on? I think it's because I did not click on a tile. Oh, nope. Select a tile on base null instance. Okay, let's see. Ah, blocks. Okay, uh, let's rename this to blocks and play one more time. And there we go. So we've moved our player. So now if I were to actually use, let's um, let's actually put in the animated sprite. Let's put in the character because I didn't realize I had it loaded. So let's go to animated sprite. We'll give it a quick sprite frame. I won't animate this again. If I, if you guys want to see an animation, maybe if this video gets a lot of uh, likes, I'll do that. But for now, I'm not going to, I'm going to just set this up really quick to kind of show what it might look like. I'm going to make the scale 0.2, move this guy down. So his feet are kind of right there. And now we can actually remove this. Let's play and play one more time. And now the reason why we have that negative six is because he pops up not on the tile I selected, but on, in the middle kind of right on the mouse on the bottom of that tile. So what I did is I simply might subtract uh, zero and six, right? So now what will happen is it'll actually pop up as if it's looking at the it's popping into that tile, right? So that's how we do that. And hopefully if you have more tiles, it'll actually do that. And that's it. So this is using simply point and click. Now, what if we want to actually move with our keyboard? Now, this is a little more complicated, but let's do this. So first off, let's create a function called move delta and let's comment the move mouse out. And we're going to create this function called move delta. And in here, we're going to set our velocity. This is actually very similar to kind of a top down movement. So we're going to set our velocity to zero. And then in that, 
or right after, we're going to get the direction of our of our keyboard. And this will actually work with a, a joystick as well. So we'll get the direction. And now what we'll do is we're going to check to see the reason why we do this part is because if I'm only setting, if I'm only clicking my right, key, my right side, I don't want to move. I only want to move if I'm doing right and up. Right. So essentially this will check if both of them are not zero. If I have to be clicking two things at once in order for this to work. Okay. Now at that point, now we can set the velocity equal to the direction times vector. We can actually do two and one. I think that would also work. Um, so let's try that. So now let's click. Ooh, let's um, uncomment that so I can actually move on to the thing. And now if I, click on my keyboard, I can move in an isometric style. Obviously it's very slow, but if I um, increase that, let's do that. So 24 by 12. Okay, there we go. He goes a little faster. So now he's moving in an isometric way. Now, if I only click one, you can't really see me clicking, but if I'm clicking up or down or right or left, it won't work. It only works if I click two at a time. Now, if you want to adjust this, you're more than welcome to, but um, I made this mainly for just a quick example of how this actually works. And that's it. So if you want to animate, obviously we haven't set up an animation tree, but I'll, I'll give you this piece of code just in case. Um, all you would have to do is say animation tree dot set the parameters of the blend position to their direction. So if you guys would like to see the me setting up the animations, um, definitely like and subscribe. Uh, if you, this video gets, let's say, 5,000 views. I'll say if this video gets 5,000 views, I'll make another episode showing you guys how to set up the animation for isometrics. Um, it should look like this. So if I bring my reference screen, whoa, I don't know what happened there. I got to add in the movement. So let's actually do that. Here you can see he doesn't move, but he it switches directions. So if you guys want to see how, how that's done, um, subscribe and let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Share the video and I will do that second video if, you, if this video gets enough likes. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.